what we're going to do next is we're going to look at how to factor trinomials. Now trinomials are probably the hardest type of polynomial to factor aside from maybe factoring some binomials and that's just because a lot of times my students don't memorize what they need to memorize. But uh, factoring trinomials, uh, we're going to learn first how to factor by grouping. And what we're going to do to factor by grouping, we're going to take a three term polynomial and then make it a four term polynomial because we just looked at how to factor a four-term polynomial, so that should be good. Uh, so it wouldn't be anything different than what we uh, were doing last time, but we just need to learn how to make it, uh, how to turn that three-term polynomial into four-term polynomial. And we often do this when our leading coefficient's not one. So if it's one, we'll look at a different method here in a second. And your answer, just like uh, we talked about last time, will be a binomial times a binomial. All right, so may want to pay attention. This can get a little uh, crazy here. Uh, here's our polynomial, 8x squared minus 10x minus 3. So what we're going to do is I would love to factor out a common factor first. However, in this example right here, as you can see, there is no common factor. Only two of the terms have a variable, and uh, 8 and 10 and 3 don't share a common factor. So what I'm going to do is to turn this three-term polynomial into a four-term polynomial, I have to do some fun little math here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, term with my highest degree and multiply it by my term with my lowest degree, or in this case specifically, what I'm going to do is multiply my quadratic times my constant. So when I do this, uh, when you multiply these two things together, this times this will give me negative 24x squared. Okay, And that number is important for us because what we're trying to do is trying to figure out two numbers that will multiply to give me that one. And then not only do they have to multiply to give me that one, but I want them to add to give me this number. Negative 10x. Alright. Now, I want them to add. Well, obviously we have two numbers. Well, when you add two numbers together, those two numbers, if they're both positive, then you're actually going to find their sum to get the answer. So for instance, 3 plus 5 is 8, because you added them together. However, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So you're actually finding the difference of the two numbers. So in this one, we're either looking for sum or difference of the two factors. Well, to determine which one, you look up here, and as you can see, because that's negative, we're actually looking for the difference of our two factors to be 10. So let's see if we can't list some things. Now, how many numbers have a difference of negative 10x? There are infinitely many. So what we always do is we look at the, the multiple first and figure out what two numbers will multiply to give me 24x squared. So 1x and 24x will work. 2x and 12x will work. 3x and 8x will work. And then uh, 4x and 6x will work. Okay, so those are the, what they call factor pairs of 24. Now what we're looking for is we're looking for the two factor pairs that have a difference of 10. Well, these two have a difference of 23x, so that's not right. These two are the ones that actually have a difference of 10. All right, now here's the other trick. The other trick is since we add them together and get negative 10x, Whatever sign this has when you're looking for the difference, it's always going to be the sign of the larger number. So that one has to be positive, and that one will be negative. Since we know they differ in, they differ in signs, because the only way you can get a negative when you multiply things together is if your two things have different signs. So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to take these two things that we found, and we're going to replace them for the linear term in your trinomial. So we'll say plus 2x, and then minus 12x. One of the common questions I get is, does it matter the order? If you put a negative 12x and a positive 2x next, or if you switch the order, it won't matter when you're factoring. So it doesn't matter the order in which you put those two things, but the important thing is, is that you find those numbers correctly. So they have to multiply to give you this and add to give you this. And I think those two numbers do that. Now we've turned our three-term polynomial into four-term, so we will factor by grouping. Common factor here is 2x, that's going to leave me 4x plus 1. I need to factor something out of this to make it look identical to this. So negative 3, 4x plus 1, we need to divide both those. Lastly, I know that's not my answer because it's not a uh, binomial times a binomial. So 
So I factor out my common factor of 4x plus 1 and group together my coefficients. Again, just like all polynomial factoring, you can check your answer. This times this is this, this times this is this, this times this is this, this times this is this. When you add those two things together, you get your original polynomial.